Hello and welcome to another video of Find Engine Development. In this video, we are going to move our circle by pressing other buttons. So, what I'm going to start by doing is I'm going to create two new objects. This is going to be the button left and the button right. Both of them are going to be based on a sprite. Since our circle is based off on a sprite, as you can see, extend sprite. I'm go just going to go ahead and duplicate this. So we're going to create the button right. Public void unmanaged update. We're not going to need this since we don't need to update it every second or every frame. Boolean move left. No. On area touched, we are going to keep this one. But not this that's at position since we don't want to move the position of our circle. So we're going to add another parameter into our so-called constructor, which is this public and the name of our class, which is button right. As you can see it takes a variable x, which is a float. Basically it can contain decimals. It takes texture region, which is a sprite or an image, and the vertex buffer object manager, which you have seen us use before. So we're going to add another object, and this is our circle, and we're going to name it player. So every time we create a button right, we need to select a player for the button right, which is which is what it's going to control. We're going to create a private variable, private circle, player too, and inside the constructor, we're going to set this that player which means the variable player will be equal to what we tap into the parameter for the player. So what we're going to do here when we press the event that is action down I think we should have because action up is just when we release it and we want to move the player when we hold it down is action down. That We're going to type player Player dot move. Player dot move right. This means that we will have to create a void inside our circle object over here. As can, basically, this is a method that we can call from another object or class since it's a public. And this, with this, we're going to move the position of our circle. So we're going to do this dot set position this dot mx this dot my I'm going to set the position to plus five. So every time we hold it down for every frame the player is going to move five steps to the right. And we're going to create another method for move left. And then we're going to go back five five steps. And see, so we we'll create a button right, and when we hold it down, this event will be called, and we will call the player that move right, which is going to move our player to right. So that is everything we need for that button. So we're just going to go ahead and copy it and do button left. It's going to work in exactly the same way, except for that we're going to call move left when we hold it down. We're going to go into main activity, and we are going to create our objects. So private button right equals to button right. Oi, that's wrong. Private button left, button left. I'm gonna remove that. And we're going to need an image for them too, so private image no texture region button right image. Private texture region button left image I'm going to make capital R and L basically after the first word in an object I usually type the next words in capital I guess it's easier to remember it that way so we're going to create buttons and initialize them over here so, button 
right image equals the bitmap texture atlas blah 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 the effect I have, I have already gone ahead and created them over here this is my button left and my button right button right dot png and a good position to place that one in would probably at 65 index axis and button left image 65 plus 65 since both of our sprites are images are in the size 64 by 64 so we have defined our image and our our button right and button left now we just need to attach them and since we want them to stick to the HUD we need to attach them to the HUD so my HUD dot attach child button right my HUD dot attach child button left and now we're going to create our buttons button right equals to new button right zero zero we're going to change the position soon and then button right image this dot get vertex upper object manager and then we must not forget that we added another parameter which was actually based off a circle object so our circle object is simply called circle what we mean is when we do this is that this circle object is going to be defined inside our button right we're just gonna come here and be on this side and the variable player inside our button right will be equal to the object that we created inside here which is the circle by doing this we can communicate between the two classes for example as we're going to do now is to make the player move so usually when you want to communicate between classes like this you need to add a parameter inside and define the object inside each class so we're going to set the sorry about that we're going to set the x and y positions for 60, 5, 7, 6 5, 7, 6 so that's where we want our button right object actually no we don't so what we're going to do is we're going to take minus button right image dot get width so this will get the width of the image with this bottom right image which is this one but for the bottom left and yeah the same width is for both of them so this will place them at 460 which is over here minus the image so it's going to end up somewhere over here now we're going to create our button left new button left minus button right image since they're both the same size it doesn't really matter times two so that will make it jump first here and then jump over here right beside our button right we need to change uh, one thing more now when we hold down the button it will only move once and it's release it and press again in order to fix that we're going to remove diff statement if the touch event is action down because remove it every time we hold it down or release it or move it we're going to call the event player that move right so go ahead and remove the if statement and do the same to button left in order to make the buttons handle cl handle touch events you will have to register a touch event touch area so we're going to do that really fast you're going to do that through the HUD so my HUD dot register touch area and then the button left and button right this will make the program recognize that we can actually touch the buttons otherwise nothing will happen when we touch them and now we're going to try and run the game as you can see this is how our program looks like just gonna minimize it a bit. 
case you don't see it. So let's see what happens when I press the left button. We should move the player to the left and it does, as you can see. And we should be able to move to the right, as you can see when I hold down the right button. So the program works exactly as it should. Now there is only one thing that I've changed that you haven't noticed and that is how to follow the player or the circle. It's really really easy to do. All you do is camera dot set chase entity and then the entity you want to chase, which in this case is circle. So this will make the circle stay in the middle of the screen all the time. So yeah, that was all for this video. So just stay tuned for the next video, and if you like the videos and the series, please give them a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you a lot for watching. Bye bye.